All right, I have a PowerTech generator with a Pancake uh, Marathon uh, head, and uh, it stopped making power after a car wash. Um, could have been due to moisture. They told me it could be brushes. So over here on the side is your brushes. There's a little grate that goes in here, and the brushes actually have one screw here and one screw here, and this one right here holds the wires, and then you have to move your uh, rotor, the piece in the center, and you can fish out your uh, brushes and check them. One of my brushes was too short, and according to the tech line, could have been bouncing off the uh, commentator. So you can ohm out your commentator. Um, you can't have the brushes on it to ohm it out. You pull this out, and if you ohm your brushes to ground, which I use the housing it uh, should not have continuity on the continuity setting on your voltmeter and I'll show you that in a second over here you also don't want you can ohm between the two there's uh, two copper rings in here I don't know if you can see those those two rings um, on the inside they're right in here where the brushes touch you want to uh, ohm between them and I believe the gentleman said it was 40 to 80 ohms. Uh, you can call um, uh, PowerTech, and Jeff there could probably give you the exact ohms that you need, but mine checked out good. So he said that it was probably brushes. So I did um, order new brushes. I ordered new brushes from um, Marathon Electric. They, uh, they were $44. Um, they have a $75 minimum, um, so I had to buy two. Uh, to meet the minimum. I had them overnighted to a campground on the other side of the world and uh, it cost me like $110 for everything which $20 overnight and they did charge me tax for the state I was in which at the time was Washington. Um, I put those in and I kept blowing the fuse on here. There's a 4 amp fuse. This fuse here kept blowing um, which I called back Jeff and uh, we went over and he told me I must have a short inside the winding on my head. So, uh, you know, basically buy a new head for $3,000. And I really don't want to spend $3,000 on a new head because the first thing they told me based on my serial number of my unit is that the head had already been changed because I should not have a marathon head. I should have a different brand, um, which I forget the name of. So it's already been changed once. So upon doing further inspection, I pulled this out, which is my automatic voltage regulator, which is the when I had called, I had told him the fuse was blowing and that's when he suggested the brushes and checking everything, which I did. Um, on here is the wiring outputs uh, for those brushes in case you do wanna check them. F plus is the F and C is the F minus. There's a lot of people, including myself now, that have tested the brushes. You check the outputs up here. There's some wires um that come out this is the blue one here is the c which is good is f um, minus and then one of these uh two here this one says f which is the back of this fuse um on my unit this fuse goes out of this brush into a 5 amp fuse and then out of the 5 amp fuse to this lead that goes into my avr before um, these two are your leads uh, for your brushes. So one of the tests after obviously being told I needed to do head was is to check the output voltage of these two leads with volts AC on your volt multimeter. When I tested those with my multimeter with the generator running with the new brushes I got 10 volts which is supposedly the high end but still good. So after that I took 12 volt battery DC regular 12 volt battery and connected that to these two wires while the generator's running. What that does is, is it ignites the commentator, which puts out your voltage. Um, because it's not regulated, you get just whatever voltage it puts out with 12 volts input. For me, I have a control here, and these are my wires that are uh, coming out of my generator. These are my power wires. I wanted to check it on the other side of my fuses to make sure I did not have an internal fault inside my cabinet or inside here. They tell you to do it before these. I took this and opened it, disconnected the wires, um, which I can also show. I basically isolated 
all the wires and didn't allow them into my RV. When I did that, I uh, put 12 volts to the two um, brushes and I output 32 volts on both legs, which means it's working perfectly. I had no shorts, no nothing happened. It ran perfect at 32 volts. So I called back Jeff at um, PowerTech and I told him what I had done because he hadn't suggested even testing it. And he told me, yeah, it sounds like everything's working perfectly that you just need to purchase a regulator. Well, this regulator uh, to overnight this uh, was 400 and $16 approximately um, and I'm about to install this but I made this video because there's no information on how to test these and a lot of people are only testing small uh, residential or job site ones that are only 7,000 this unit here is 12,500 kW um, now this pancake head is sold in many different kW configurations 10,000 12,000 um, and there's different ones but I figured I'd be able to help other people not spend $3,000 on a new head that they did not need. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to install this now and then I'll come back and we'll see if it works. So inside this box is where I disconnected my generator from my RV so that I could isolate my uh, transfer switch and the generator from my RV to do testing. So this gray uh, liquid tight is how mine um, my power is fed into my unit in this box so I have three wires uh, I, it's four but one's a ground it's a green uh, the other three are gonna be red white and black so you have two leads because um, you have two legs essentially and then one neutral uh, that generates the 120 instead of being 240 um, so when I tested my output voltage I go from the white wire to, to one of the things, the red or the black, and look for 120 volts. When testing the brushes, and I put 12 volts to the brushes, these wires using the same thing from the white to the red or the white to the black, on my unit, I got 32 volts output, which means it's working perfectly and that all I needed was the AVR replaced. Um, again, they had told me I needed a new generator head. Nowhere online does it show how to do this so that you can um, do this test and find out if your generator head is bad. Um, one last thing that I do want to say is inside my box up here on top, there's two wires that are wrapped that are just got black tape over them um, on the ends. It looks like they maybe the person installed it. If anybody in the comments uh, knows more about these and is watching my video to just, you know, because they're interested or something they do, I have two wires that are wrapped um, in black tape. And I'm wondering if that's the optional 12 volt, 12 volt output that they, uh, they pre-install in all of these and then uh, it's used or not used. This one says uh, B1 um, on one of the wires. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find the other wire to see what it says. But um, yeah, there's two random wires placed inside this control that come out of my generator head that uh, are not marked. Here's the other one. It says BR. So if anybody in the comments has any idea what the BR and the B1 or BI are, uh, please um, put in there so that I can learn a little bit more about what that might be or if I explain something or the exact specs of the ohms or the voltage output, um, please comment so that I can put it in my, you know, my description and maybe help some other people. Uh, PowerTech does not have any information out that I could find in any of the manuals that helps a consumer figure out what's wrong with this. Um, I know they switched hands um, and were bought out in 2016. People had said that after that customer service was horrible. Um, I did not have a bad customer uh, service experience as much as I just had, um, you know, they, they want to sell you parts more than they want to help you fix what you have. That's the impression I got. I, I never got a negative person. I never got somebody that was rude or inconsiderate. I just didn't get, you know, the additional details. And maybe that's because there's a concern that people might electrocute themselves or hurt themselves, which you absolutely could kill yourself doing this. Uh, you know, if you touch the wires wrong or anything else, this is 
for somebody that's very confident and uh, knows how to handle electricity. So here's my voltmeter. I have it set on volts, uh, and then I have it set on AC. And then uh, that's what you'd use to test your brush's volts output while your generator's running. You should see 10 volts AC. Um, and then of course you leave this same setting and you would do your, um, you would test your uh, voltage output too. If you thought you had a bad head, you could test at the wires that I had shown, um, the white and the red or the white to the black, and that would tell you what your output is. Um, you know, your head potentially could be putting out voltage and your transfer switch could have quit or you could have a bad wire somewhere. Um, so obviously that might be the first step. Uh, the last thing is, is continuity, which mine has a little sound here. Um, and it says open line, which means there's no continuity. And then when you make continuity, um, there you go. So it would make the beeping noise, which is, you know, these meters are fairly inexpensive and found everywhere. Um, this meter isn't, but some of the ones on Amazon can be found very cheap. Uh, the ohms is also, it's that little horseshoe symbol. That's the ohms for when you do your commentator, uh, which is the two copper rings that are on the rotor, which is what's inside the center uh, that spins on a generator, um, which is, you know, obviously after you've done some other tests. So I'm going to put this thing together now and see what I have.